Hello students, welcome to Shirtback Academy. In this lesson we're going to begin our personal finance course. This lesson will begin module 1, money management. In this lesson we will be covering section 1.1. Our topic is money and values. Let's begin. Money is the widely accepted method to transfer goods and services from one person to another. Money is a tool that enables people to conduct transactions. A currency is a monetary type that is specific to a country or region. Many nations have their own currency. An example is the US dollar. It is America's currency. Other nations share a single currency. A common example is the euro which is the currency for the member nations of the European Union. Money maintains its value because people have a common trust in the form of payment. There are several common money forms that we see today. Paper cash, we commonly call this fiat. We have coins and tokens, precious metals such as gold and silver, and a new form of money type digital assets. Your financial values are the inner thoughts and beliefs that are most meaningful to you. They help guide people to make financial decisions that reflect who they are and what is important to them. Financial values will prioritize resources to care for and invest in what the person supports. A few examples of financial values may be shopping at local businesses, donating to specific charities, or teaching at a school of your faith. Financial values adapt over your lifetime. You have certain career, family, and community events that occur over your lifetime that may change your financial values. A trade-off is a compromise where a person gives up one item in order to obtain a second item. Good money management will require the ability to make financial trade-offs. Limited resources will force people into making tough decisions. We only have so much time, energy, and money. Prioritization is making financial decisions that support our most important needs. Some examples would be buying groceries before lottery tickets, paying your mortgage and rent before a vacation, and contributing to a retirement account when you can. Opportunity cost is the value of the option you did not choose in a decision. It can be a single value or the combined value if there are multiple declined options. In the screenshot to the right we have a drawing from one of our students. It's a good example of opportunity cost. In the drawing, the girl has a choice between choosing a television or an iPod. She decides she'd rather have the iPod, so the opportunity cost is the television. Opportunity costs differ from trade-offs. There's nothing given up within the decision. It's just the inherent value of what we didn't choose. Opportunity cost helps to measure the success of money management skills. Are you investing in the right companies? Are there any clear decision errors in your decisions? An example of an opportunity cost would be if you go to a concert instead of a fancy restaurant dinner. You go to the concert but decline to go to the dinner. The opportunity cost is the fancy dinner. It's the declined option. A common model we use in financial decision making is the DECIDE model. It stands for define, establish, choose, identify, decide, evaluate, decide. Step one is defining the problem. We need to clarify what is the current decision we need to make. What objective do we hope to achieve with the decision? Step two is establishing criteria. We need to, we need to determine what must we have and what would we like to have in a decision. What must we get from the decision is using prioritization. 
What would we like to get is being able to smartly use our resources if we have the ability. Step three is choosing options. We need to pick several potential choices for the decision we must make. The options that we choose should match our criteria. Step four would be identifying the pros and cons of each decision. What are the benefits? What are the drawbacks? Step five is deciding the best option. We should choose the most logical solution to our problem. We should prioritize the benefits of the outcome. The final step, step six, is evaluating the results. We should review our decision outcomes after they're done. That will allow us to make adjustments for the next time we may encounter the same decision. That will conclude this lesson. In our next lesson, we will cover section 1.2, Targeting Goals. If you have any questions about the contents of this lesson, please review the course notes for section 1.1. We thank you for following along to the video. We'll see you in the next one. Enjoy the rest of your day, everyone.